excited to play with um, Distress inks and blending brushes today. Distress Oxide, really, which is a pigment and dye fusion ink. So that pigment part lets it sit on top of the paper a little bit longer and gives you even more time for blending. I'm going to use this plaid stencil. Um, I'm actually going to play with it a few times and make a few different kinds of plaids before I decide which one I'm going to eventually use to finish the card with. So um, I'm using my Make Art station mat by Wendy Becky. Um, this is a metal uh, 12 by 12 uh, mat that comes with these chunky magnets that are really strong and they hold down the paper and the stencil for you so that you don't have to mess around with tape or, or hold it yourself. And then I'm also going to use blending brushes. These are the life-changing blending brushes from Picket Fence and they really allow you to create a smooth, seamless blend uh, of colors. Um, I'm really impressed with them. Notice how I'm holding this one by the head of the brush and not by the handle. That's because I'm wanting to put a pretty intense color down. I don't want a very light application. I want more color. So by moving my hand towards the head of the brush, um, it just is going to let me easily get a more intense color, more payoff of color. If I were to use the same color and hold it by the end of the handle, I would have a very light application. So I'm going to um, do this through the stencil. This stencil is um, a plaid stencil from Tim Holtz. And I'm going to try a few different colors. So that first one was spiced marmalade of Distress Oxide. And now I'm going into a fired brick. And I just want to blend these colors together right through the stencil, creating um, a multicolor plaid is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> My idea for this card is to eventually is, is to cr essentially create my own uh, background, my own colors, my own design. Um, I don't exactly know how this one's going to turn out. I've never done this before, so you're playing along with me and are watching along with me as I play and figure it out. Um, this fired brick color and the spice marmalade are beautiful fall colors, though, don't you think? Now let's add in some green. This is um, peeled paint, distress oxide. I'm going to use a different brush although I could just take the time to clean the other one. <laughs> so I'll speed it up here so you don't, you kind of, because you get the idea now. I'm blending each color into the ones before it. And then I need to move the stencil down because my stencil, my paper is longer than my stencil is. So I just find where the design repeats, line it up on my station mat, and then I'm going to use those magnets again to hold it in place. And then I will continue down the rest of the paper. I'm making a long card. This is a slim line card. So it's eight and a half long by three and a half wide. Um, these kind of cards have recently become popular inside as a new size. And uh, the great thing is they fit right inside of standard size 10 or also known as a business size envelope. And um, uh, unless you make them quite heavy and dimensional, they don't require any excess postage, which is nice. And it's just fun to do a different size. So I'm going to finish filling in the holes here that I see left, and then we will reveal what the stencil, what my new pattern looks like. I'm going to go back with a little bit more orange here and finish up. And just blending, just let it blend into the color before it. So I just can kind of fade from one color to the next. Okay, da -da 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 -da. time for the reveal. <laughs> we'll see what we have. Wow. I'm sorry, but that is kind of hot. I like it. I really do. I don't know if it's going to work for what I would have in mind, though. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. What I'm going to do now is take the same size panel and instead of coloring through the stencil, I'm gonna just go ahead and color the entire background of the stencil first um, with the same colors. Um, my idea is I really want to have a white element on top or an off-white element on top of the plaid. And that other card that the other panel I just made was a little, had too much white, you know, had too much of that showing. So I'm gonna try something different here. So I'm blending these colors, it looks really pretty. 
and then um, I'm realizing like it's a little it's not enough I need another color so I'm gonna bring in um, seedless preserves and this is kind of a plummy purpley color and see right there even it's already a little messy and I got some color where I didn't want to because I had some ink on my hand so I'm just gonna take a brush and blend it right out see look at that it's easy 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 so because of, it's because that of that pigment mixed into the oxide ink um, it gives you it sits on top of the paper it gives you time to blend and of course these amazing brushes so that was an easy fix and I kind of lost some of my green, so I'm going to go back and just kind of freshen that green up a little bit and blend it in. There we go. Now I have all four colors kind of represented there. And I'm going to go ahead and clean my mat since I'm making such a mess. A little water and a paper towel is all it's going to take because these inks are water-based. Easy. Okay. So now I need to get the plaid onto that color. So I'm going to go back to my clean stencil and I'm going to line it up on my on my station mat again and use the magnets to hold it in place. And I want to use, I want the plaid to really stand out so I'm going to use this brown, this is walnut stain, and another brush, another blending brush. This is one of the little ones. Um, uh, after I started I realized I could have used a big one too but what the heck I already started. <laughs> um, but I, my intention was to just really get a lot of color on the, to focus my coloring on the open areas of the stencil. So I'll go ahead and speed this up and I'm just, you can see I'm just filling in all the open areas of the stencil with this brown color. And now I'm getting close to the bottom. So I'm going to finish the stencil out and then I'm going to um, move the stencil down to finish the because again it's a longer piece of paper so I need to reset the design oh a little sneak I already live but look at that now that see the intense color there so there's no cream showing at all and that's I think going to fit my card idea a little better but first I need to figure out where the design will line up again and I actually don't even, I actually do this a little bit. I didn't get this right, right? I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> it's slightly off, but I can't even, you know, it's hard to tell. Um, I would have, going, looking at what I, this mistake I just made, I realize now if I had cleaned off the stencil, it would have been really obvious. Um, but I just like, well, I'm going to clean it in a minute. I only have a little bit more to go. But um, it's not a real obvious mistake in, in the end. So I'm still satisfied with with it. There we go. You can just see that the design isn't exactly matched up, but um, it still looks great, actually. I really do like the darker plaid. The other plaid, gosh, I really love the design, but it's not going to work for my card. So I tried it a few different colors, or a few different ways. Those are all the same colors, believe it or not, um, on all three of those. It's just that, well, I should say the first one I did didn't have any purple, but the two darker ones have the seedless preserves, the peeled paint, the fired brick, and the spice marmalade, and the walnut stain. Okay, so I've got my backgrounds. Now I'm going to design the front element of the card. I'm gonna use this Thanks die from Photoplay. I love that they have a positive, well, I should say in the die and a shadow die. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the actual die and not the shadow on this one. Um, in fact, I'm going to use a negative of it, so. I've cut the piece, this piece of cream heavyweight cardstock to the size I want to layer over my plaid. And I want to essentially cut shapes out of that and layer it over my plaid so that the plaid can peek, sort of peekaboo through. So I taped down the thanks because I don't want to lose the inside dot of the A. But I'm arranging the leaves. These leaves are stitched fall leaves from Lawn Fawn. So I'm arranging the leaves on the panel and I ran those through the Big Shot. And now I'm going to take all the dies off. And I don't really, I don't need any of the cutout parts. So I'm just going to scoot all those to the side. And then I'm going to carefully peel off my thinks. Okay. And then I'll just use a pick to pop out those letters. 
and I'm going to save that little dot in the A so I'm going to put that aside so I don't lose it. And then pop everything else out. I don't need to keep these letters that are that I die cut. These pop out real easily. Those big everything cut really nice. So that was good. Okay. So that's the essentially the top layer of my card. And then I'm gonna put it on top of one of these plaids. So let's see what they look like. See, I really like that plaid, but you just can't appreciate, yeah, you can't see it very well. So I'm going to do it on one of these darker ones, I think. Yeah. Yeah, see, I think that looks better. I'm definitely going to use that lighter colored plaid on a different project, though, because it's too pretty not to. <laughs> I, I would love to make my pumpkin plaid this year. I'm already thinking about pumpkin decorating, and it's early September. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and glue um, this panel to the front of my card. I'm using Tombow Mono Multi, my favorite liquid glue. This kind of a very thin layer. One of the reasons I like it is because when I put it down on a panel, I have room, I have time, a little bit of time to manipulate it, but also because it holds really, really strong. I don't, this, I have only made a few of these slimline cards. See, it looks a little bit crooked. I've only made a few of these slimline cards, and so I'm not as um, adept at getting my paper down straight as I am on a different size card, I typically create a two size card. So having that liquid helped me give me a little bit of extra time to pick up that corner and move it up and line it up the way I wanted it to. So that was really handy. And then a tiny dot of that mono multi for the dot of the A. And I'm gonna pick it up with my silhouette tool here or my quick stick tool. I love this tool because it has the whole top comes off and then I have a it's like I have two tools in one. It's like an extra pair of of hands. <laughs> and get that A position just right. So that is good. I really like how that turns out. I love seeing the plaid through the through the die cut leaves. I think that looks really neat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue that to the slimline card base. I'll just go ahead and use the same glue. When using a liquid glue, don't get it right next to the edge because it's going to squish out. <laughs> so just inside the edge is better. And a thin amount, a thin line. I'm actually, I actually drag the tip on the paper. I don't hold it above the paper. I don't want to be the glue. I want just a thin layer. I'm going to hold that down. Oh, and then I realized, oh yeah, the make card station can hold it for me. The magnets are great for holding things that need to dry. Okay, so now I need to think about how do I want to embellish. So I'm going to grab a few things. My first instinct was sequin, so I grabbed a couple that sort of match. Purple, that purple I had in wasn't going to work. And then gold might be cool, I don't know. Maybe I need to use some twine. I feel That feels more fall-like. I don't want to take away from the plaid. So I think I'm just going to do the twine and not and skip on the sequins. So I cut about not quite a yard of this twine and I fold it in half and bring it around the fold of the card and then I'm just going to tie that in a knot. I do like to tie bows. If you know me, you know I like to tie bows, but for this fall card I felt like just a little simple tie was more appropriate and I did, again I don't want to distract from the plaid at all so I really like this but then I realized I smudged I had a little ink on my finger and I smudged right there so I'm looking for ways to camouflage that <laughs> and I hadn't thrown away these um, positive of the leaf die cuts and when I lay them on there I instantly fell in love with it because of the texture of the leaf but then I'm not sure should I color it or not so I take one and just put a little color just to see and it does look cool but I think it takes away from the plaid I think I like just this leave it plain leave it this plain cream color because um, they do they are textured with that stitch design from Mon Fawn on there so um, the stitched veins look really cool, and I don't want to distract, again, like I say, from the plaid. So I'm just going to pop dot a few of these on here. 
again, the main reason is because right above the S, and thanks, I got a little smudge of ink. <laughs> and um, so it was started out as camouflage, but you know, I had to round it out. You see, you can kind of make out the smudge over there. So I'm going to disguise that with a little, yeah, see, <laughs> so I'm going to disguise that with one of these leaves. And then the other two are just to make it look like I did it on purpose. <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors, right? I couldn't, I couldn't let that plaid go to waste. I was, it was so pretty. And actually, I really like this card even more now with those white leaves on there. That is, I'm, I have to say, I like it. I love, I love fall colors though, but that was a fun card to make. I just like how the plaid peeks through. So it's not overwhelming, but it's still, it's there, you know. I could see doing the same card in spring colors and maybe the, the leaves are, um, you know, springy leaves or maybe they're flowers or even Easter eggs or something. Because this plaid and pastels would be really fun too. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed creating or watching me create. <laughs> and I hope you play with stencils. Thank you.